I'm going to need a little bit more Miss Sunshine for this uh, <laughs> this video. Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models, and you're thinking to yourself, if you're a um, long time watcher, what the hell have you got an airfix kit for, Becker? What's going on? Um, if you're new to the channel, you may not know, but I don't really like modern day airfix. They do not gel with me. I have a list of reasons, and I'm going to go over them because I love to talk about it. Well, no, I don't like to talk about it. I mean, give them a break. They're trying their best, or are they? I don't know. But um, yeah, there's an imbalance in the modeling universe at the moment because uh, Harry Houdini, if you're uh, interested, if you know who Harry Houdini is, is her. If you're into waffles, model ships, and crazy Aussies, go check out his channel. He hates Tamiya. No, no, I'll take that back. He He's like me, we're opposite sides of the coin. He doesn't mind Tamiya, but they just don't talk to him. And he got burnt by a particularly bad old Tamiya kit, an old tank kit, and he tried one of their newish 148 scale aircraft kits that go together like an old FX kit used to, and he just got put off by the whole Tamiya craze. It's all a bit of a timing thing. Go check out his channel, check out the video. I might put a link up there. He explains why he's sort of anti-Tamiya. I tried to kick him along and say, hey, look, there's actually some elements of the brand that actually are really good, and that's their motorcycles. They're actually fantastic. Unfortunately, he tried, and he, you know, like, like me, we're both ex-motorbike riders, uh, and we love our, our bikes. He tried to um, find some, but they're really hard to find, particularly the open bike style that we, you know, that the old school sort of motorbikes, not the ones covered in the plastic fairings. But I came across a uh, on sale, a Tamiya 112th scale Honda uh, Formula One car, and I thought, aha, this will get him, this will get him going. So I sent that up to his uh, his new place and, and said, and put it in the mail, I said, here, check this out, well, <laughs> I wonder what it's going to be like. And he opened it up and goes, oh, it's Tamiya. And then he opened it up again and he went, ooh, this looks interesting, it looks a bit more up his alley. So that's the reason why he's doing a Tamiya kit, because it's more sort of what he's into. He's not really into their armor stuff, they don't really do the ships that he likes. Anyway, I'm not going to defend him. I'm going to try to explain why I uh, am not really a big fan of the modern airfix stuff because, well, but uh, this modern stuff that they do, the red box stuff, the so-called new tooling, a lot of it looks like it's been carved by a, a, a dyslexic three-year-old with uh, a pair of scissors. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't speak to me and I've been cursed and, uh, you know, I tried building their their new Hawker Sea Fury, beautiful aircraft, beautiful subject. The plastic was disgusting, it was short shot, the cowl didn't fit, I had, you know, lots of problems. Got rid of that. I tried building their new Lancaster, Avro Lancaster. Looked like a great kit out of the box. The fuselage was warped, the wings didn't fit, uh, the plastic was made out of some sort of soap. What else did I try? Oh, Airfix Lightning, English Electric Lightning. What an amazing aircraft, you know, the pinnacle of British uh, technology. Nope, came in the box because the way that Airfix, their lack of quality control, came in the box with the fuselage, with a big um, crack through one of the fuselage halves. <sighs> Is there more? Probably. I've tried. I've really tried. I've tried hard. Maybe it's just that I have a different way of approaching modeling. I, I have, you know, someone asked the other day, uh, what, are the, what are the little pleasures you get out of modeling? And one of the ones I get is when you put a part into another part and there's no seam line to fill to fill because they've engineered it to fit on the bloody panel line. Isn't that an interesting concept? <laughs> so um, you know things like that. And the, the problem is, and again if you're not if you're not new if you're new to my channel, get the words out right Chris, if you're new to my channel you probably don't understand that I have an affliction. I like doing all my aircraft in flight like this. And Airfix of old, my fir very first aircraft kit was in flight and it had a pilot seated pilot it had the wheel wells being able to uh, close up in fact i'll put a picture up here i'll show you i mean you know it was pretty bad brush painted with um life color paints or something and you know it didn't have a stand in it that's the other three i have a triangle of make a triangle there you go one two three um of things that i like to see in every aircraft kit and that's a seated pilot and crew closed wheel wells and some sort of stand um, or ability to, to display in flight and most modern aircraft kits these days just don't include that. Apart from the superlative 132nd scale Tamiya aircraft, their, um, all their prop jobs, Zero Mustang, uh, Corsair, Spitfires, etc. The Mosquito can be very slightly modified to in-flight, no problems at all, but it's got you know beautiful pilots and so forth. 
and a few other manufacturers. I've done a review on the new uh, Great Wall Hobby, yeah, Great Wall Hobby uh, Curtis Hawk. In-flight capable, oh, fantastic. And so I've actually reduced my stash that unless they've got at least two of the three things that I want in the kit, I'm not doing it anymore. I've had enough of trying to fix what I call car models and turn them into actually aircraft models. The funny thing is though, Modern Airfix actually has two of those things, sometimes three of them, sometimes they have flight stands. Uh, but they have seated pilots and they engineer for wheel wells closed. So you would think that Airfix and I should get on. Why don't we? Mm, I don't know. And why am I filming this and telling you that I'm going to build an Airfix kit when I've got so many other things on the bench that I really want to get to? Well, I figured I need to, like I said at the start, I need to um, fix the imbalance in the modeling universe. If Houdini is going to do a Tamiya kit, I'm going to do an Airfix kit. And this is actually his. I bought this for him because, you know, you have to fill up your cart and you get free shipping. And I said, oh, is there anything you want? He goes, oh, yeah, give me that new Sabre. It looks fantastic. No worries. Got it for him. Then he turns around and says, oh, I don't really want it anymore. Fine. <laughs> I was going to throw this in my cell pile, but I thought, no, I've got to fix that imbalance. So let's get stuck into it. I'm not going to do a full inbox review. I'm going to have a quick look at it. I'm going to give you some of my, I've gone through it already. I've worked out what I'm going to do. I'm pretty much going to do this one. The box art, pretty much in that pose too, you know, flying in the air. And um, yeah, I'm just, like I said, I won't do a full review. There's plenty of them online. Uh, look at Moss6510. He's done a great re uh, inbox review. He's gone over the whole thing. And I'm just going to get stuck into building it. And I'm going to slam this thing together and see if it comes up with something that resembles an aircraft. So let's go. I need more coffee first because, yeah, upon opening this box and you think, this retails for $80. <laughs> Let me just have some coffee. Well, it retails for $80 down here in Australia. Um, it's a good box. There is some rattling inside, and this is something I really hate about Airfix. Uh, but at least in this one, they've made the sprues to almost go the full length. I hate this. One plastic bag. I mean, I know we're all greenies now. We don't want to have so much plastic around. But all the sprues are in one bag, including... Well, they put the clear parts in a separate one, but there's stuff floating around in there. I can already see some parts that have come. Where was it? There's a nozzle. There, there it is. Woo! -hoo! Wee! There it goes. Wee! Another one. It's 2022. Quality control is rubbish. That's not acceptable. What's this doing here? A rod. Hmm. That's to beat the quality control manager on the head or up the bum because he needs to get pull his finger out. Um. Yeah. Let's have a quick look at some stuff. Okay. I have looked through the instructions and I've got to admit, in other areas, it's pretty bloody good. I mean, I really like these instructions, the way that they've, they show you, um, you know, there's step one, oh, there's step two, but they tell you what you did in step one here in red. So you know where you're going, you know what I mean? Like it's 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 sort of sort of like they've almost thought about it. There are a couple of faults in the instructions. Uh, where are they? There's some parts, they give you the, like I said, the in-flight option. So there's a nice pilot. I'll have a look at that in a minute. What they've done, however, and on first glance, when you look at the fuselage halves, I'll take this out in a second. Look at all those open panels. I really hate that. I think it's. I think the hobby's gone the wrong way into making all these open panels, so you feel obliged to build everything. You got to have a full interior showing. When really, don't we just want to build the outline of the aircraft like it's on the box art? But from the looks of it, what they've done, the way they've engineered the parts, um, the parts have a flange all the way around the outside, so they're not. A butt joint to the outside skin they're actually with that flange goes in there then it becomes flush that looks like good engineering let's let's go forward and see if that actually works uh, you can build the gun bays you can get then it's got the engine at the back here it looks like a, a fod cover that goes on the back uh, I'm not gonna worry about filling the seam Helps them put it in camera Chris so they can see I'm not worried gonna get you know, to hang up at filling the seam back here because I'm gonna put this acrylic rod up the exhaust for the flight stand and speaking about flight stands here's the ability it's really good of airfix to show you if you want to do wheels down and you want to build a car there it is if you want to build a real aircraft there it is yes i'm going to say stuff like that because i'm snarky get over it um yeah, there's quite a lot of steps look at this it's we're up to 56 they are quite clear though i've gone through these where is where are the parts that you're not supposed to put on there's a couple of parts because what they did i'm talking really fast here because my kids are about to come home and i need to get this on camera before they do um, okay, the big fuel tanks, don't use them, they never use them apparently, and there's some trusses, however they take it, here we go, part number 84, these two parts, 
They're for the jack, for when you jack up the airframe for maintenance. You don't need to put them on. They were there because they, they did a LiDAR or a laser scan of this aircraft at a museum, so don't worry about it. Um, yeah, so it's 80, 89 steps. Bloody hell. It's quite involved. But what they do do, to their credit, if I can say that quickly, three times, do do. Look at all those stencils. Wow. Yeah, I'm not doing all those, but um, <laughs> that's a really nice layout. Well done, Airfix. That's um, very clear, very easy to understand. Um, you've got the three, four, no, four point view. That's great. Nice A3 piece of paper there. And then they give color call outs as well. And that's fantastic. Here we are. Okay. Uh, they tell you what sort of scale that is. I'll have to wonder what sort of scale that is to get the right sort of overlap for this camouflage. But that's quite easy to understand. And they give you some research notes along the way explaining where to put the codes, how to, um, how to position the decals and and all that. I mean, they've still got the old Humbrol callouts, but if if you've got a good um, online paint program, you can easily match them. And, and to their credit, they give the BS, uh, the British Standard numbers uh, for the dark green, sea gray, and, and PRU blue. So, you know, kudos for that. That's well done. And then on the other side, you get the other option with the green flashing around the Randells. I'm, I'm tempted to do this one. Um, yeah, because I think I'm going to use this as a base. This is a uh, my base, which is actually an award. <laughs> I'll, um, I, I did that before on my Messerschmitt. So it's a really nice piece of timber. I'll use that as a base and I might put this K flash code, I might put that across there just as something. I don't know. We'll think about it as I go on. And then we get to the decals. Like I said, I'm just going to fly through this. And this is actually one thing I haven't had a very close look at, but they're really nice. Wow. They are really, really nice. The carrier film around the stencils is Oh, it's barely non-existent. That's really, really good stuff. And I'm, I'm looking at the reds and the and the whites. The whites look really nice and strong. They, they don't look translucent. They don't look like they're going to be see-through. Uh, the carrier film on the around around these things. I should zoom in, shouldn't I? Because you can't see anything. You can just see me pontificating. How's that? Um, that looked pretty good. Yeah. I think I'm going to be happy with that. I'm not going to do all these stencils, that's just too much. I'll just do all the relevant ones to make to busy it up. Alright, let's just have a pause here. I need to have a coffee, more coffee, because uh quick look at the parts and I'll explain. Well, <laughs> I've seen some bits already that I'm scratching my head, but some bits I'm like, oh, it could be interesting. So let me just cut this open, get all these individual sprues out. Hopefully nothing will look. I've already got broken fuselage bits. Let me have a look. So I've found a problem with the clear parts already. They are nice and clean and uh, not clean, they're clear and there's not much going on there. But, you know, there's scuff marks all the way along the, the top of that canopy because they put the parts in the same bag together. That's unacceptable. OK, I know a lot of other companies do it, too. But, uh, you know, Airfix, I mean, there's scratches or some sort of scuff marks down the side of that canopy. Yeah, and yeah, there's some definite almost gouges there on that side. I hope I can hope I can uh, fix that. And anyway, bloody typical. Uh, and then of course there were two pieces just come off the sprue inside the bag. Can you see why I don't like this company? They they just it's not it's not good enough. It's lack of care and attention. Okay, you can do a lot better if you're going to be charging eighty Australian dollars. I want to be getting a quality, you know, thing. I mean, I could buy I could buy a. Well, not 80. Well, close to it. I can buy a Tamiya P38 for the same price, and it won't be like that. Just basic packaging. Anyway, let the ranting continue. Now, this this looks pretty good. The the plastic is nice and smooth. The panel lines are a bit Luke Skywalker, aka going down a Death Star trench. Um, yeah, it looks all right. Like I said, you've got all these open panels, but apparently the flanges on the parts um, will cover them. So yeah, that doesn't look too bad so far, but like I said, the panel lines are a bit bit big. Um, all right, so in terms of what's this sprue? I don't know what this one is. It's a C. Yeah, the, the attachment points are nice and petite. I must give them that. That's a lot better than what they've done in recent years. So I'm good for increasing that. The plastic still is a little bit, a bit you know, I won't say Rolf Harris. He's a bad boy now, isn't he? <laughs> a bit, um, yeah. Yeah, the pilot's pretty good. The pilot's actually really nice, but just like Tamiya, who will never learn, or their 148, his hands are on his laps. Is that how you fly a plane? No. 
Oh, that's a shame. That's a really nice pilot, actually. Look, get it in camera, Chris. That might help. You can't see it, can you? Can you see it? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, oh well. It's better than not having one at all, so that's fine. I'll just do it as is. And we've got one major sprue left, and we've got, you know, parts dangling off. And uh, This is B. The cockpit looks all right just down here. This one-piece tub. It's got a few little things. We've got some wires happening back there. And if you do wheel wells, you know, some detail there on the underside of the wheel wells and also some nice wires on, on these main gear doors. Uh, I'm just looking around to see if there's anything bad. Someone said there's some sink marks in the flaps, but I can't really see it. Here's the extra parts that they do for the for the up. That's interesting. Look at that massive flange all the way around. I think that's for the nose gear, so that's really well done. Yeah, so I'm just going to flip that, and yeah, that looks that looks quite good, actually. That's not too bad. And then the last one are the wings, upper wings. Okay, so what have we got here? Here's where some of these parts have come off. Oh. Well, that's that's I think that's fixable and yeah there's ejection pin marks on the underside but you won't see them so that's fine wing fence looks nice and straight and sort of in scale looks a bit chunky I can't see those sink marks that people were talking about are they there no I can't really see them I'll probably be discovered halfway as I'm building all right and then the last thing to look at is instrument instrument panel looks quite nice actually can I actually show that a bit better uh, yeah, no, that'll come up nicely. There's a, I'm just going to put a straight decal on that and that should do it. So, let's just get stuck into this. No more faffing about. Like I said, I'm just going to use a, an acrylic rod here to put up the, will it fit? Yep, it'll just fit in the, that's the exhaust pipe, I think. Um, I can just thin it out a bit. So that's how I'll set it up and let's just get straight into it. So major construction has begun. I've completed putting out all the parts on the right hand side fuselage there and you can see the difference with the left hand there's four pieces you've got to plug in uh, to close up all these panels now in theory it should work fine and <laughs> I shouldn't really complain but these ones dropped in they literally dropped in after I cleaned the sprue points up they um they just fit straight in see those little frames or gussets or ledges or flanges whatever you want to call them in your language choose a choose your thing and just go straight in there and while I've got that here I love this piece absolutely love it this is the nose gear look at that just go straight in like that oh, hopefully that'll fit on the other side as well however fly in the ointment consistency quality control it's something I keep on belaboring about okay this part is cleaned up all these parts are cleaned up the only one that fits perfectly is that that little um, little thing there if I try to put this in and this might not work on camera let's try this way uh, the major takeaway is it doesn't fit um, but the other side did see look I can't get the it got it in okay and I've got a, a ledge so this needs and then there's a gap that way if I push that way so this needs fettling all the way around if we go to this piece the gun port okay again it's a little bit too tight and it won't go in all the way there's a there's a hollow in there so that every part needs to be cleaned up and then this piece and I've had trouble with the other one as well so the wing root piece um, yeah, it sort of fits kind of not really there's no sort of what the problem is is the molding quality along these 9 degree angles is just not very high quality and you can see it on a lot of the other pieces too. I'll just show you the one that's glued in. You can see that there's a, and you can hear my dog having a lick, hey Penny. <laughs> there's a bit of a bit of a gap there that's going to have to be filled just with a little bit of Mr. Surfacer and this needs to be filed nice and flush because it's just not sitting right. So, so far I give it a 7 out of 10. What I've moved on to do is I've put the cockpit together, I might zoom in for this. So I've glued the cockpit tub and I've just got the instrument panel there nice and loose but it does fit in there nice and snug to the top of the inlet and it does have some ejection pin marks in there. I'm not going to bother cleaning them up because you really won't see it after you put the uh, after you put the nose on in there and it's not something I really worry about too much these days. There's the other half and that's the bottom so that goes on like so. Uh, that went together okay. The 
The ejection seat's a bit bulky, a bit chunky, but it's uh, it fit together okay. Fits in there nicely, and the pilot as well. I've got him on a bit of sprue because I will. Where is he? There he is. I will paint him separately, or I might glue him in. He fits in there nicely. I might actually glue him in there and just use the seat. I do that for a lot of builds where I just it's just it's just easier. It's it's another step not to have to worry about. Um, you know, trying to glue an already painted pilot into an already painted seat. It's just glue the plastic together and paint them together. That's what I do. So, yeah, I've moved on to the wings as well. And oh, I love this piece. I'm, this is this is really um, <laughs> making me excited about Airfix again. There's the one piece uh, wheel well doors. All done. The fit is not perfect. You can see there's a gap there and there. It's that, but that'll be easy to fill. A little bit of Mr. Surf, so it'll be fine. Um, to give you some foreshadowing of what I have to do with the other fuselage half, I had to sand all the all parts of those flanges because they're just a little bit too tight. It just wouldn't fit in. So a little bit of fettling and it'll be right. I've got to put the wings together next. I've drilled the hole out for the drop tanks and I've made the drop tanks. In fact, I've pretty much glued together everything that needs to be glued together. And yeah, this is a relatively quick build. I like I said, I'll give it about a seven out of ten. I think it's got potential. We'll see how I go when I actually close the. Uh, the fuselage to paths together. Uh, so far, not too bad. There, well, I can't really do much until this one's got its parts in. So once that's all ready to go, what I will do next is wash my sprues. Well, no, I'll wash the bits that are going to be painted because there might be something on there. I don't know. I don't know if Airfix is still using something, but it's good anyway because you know you put your fingers and you pick your nose and whatever and you've got stuff all over it so give it a quick wash dry it off then go to the paint booth so that's where i oh, will leave it off for now next up next time you'll see we'll get some paint on catch you later